show you two very similar shapes and at the same time as I show you these shapes I'm going to ask you a very important question and I want you guys to think fast about your answer to this question and also don't change your mind are you ready? so here I have two very similar shapes labeled A and B and the question is which shape is bigger? Quickly take a look now which of these two shapes is bigger and I would like you to get your answer and type it in the comments to lock it in fully that way you cannot change your mind okay have you locked in your answer well I think a lot of you might have gone for is a very peculiar shape because B is not the bigger shape but neither is A let me show you if I take off these two shapes changed or is it still B? Well, if you went for B, I can show you that these two shapes are exactly, exactly, exactly the same size. B is the same size as A, like so. Get that right. If you did, then congratulations. But if not, then you might want to stay tuned because in tonight's video, that is exactly what we are about. In tonight's video, I bring you illusions. Illusions. 
as I mentioned, a few of these illusions are going to trick your mind, but are also going to be a little funny on the eyes, so a little heads up, but if you want to just listen to the sounds, that is also completely, completely, completely fine. Now, the first illusion I want to show you is something that you can actually make yourself, and I will show you exactly how you can make this illusion, but here it is. Now, I call it the impossible paper illusion. And the reason it seems impossible is because, as you can see, I have a sheet of paper which has these two cuts in it. It's got two pieces cut from it. However, it has this little middle piece which is protruding from the paper, as you can see, like so. Now, what if I told you that this illusion has no sellotape, no trickery involved at all? It would probably confuse you. I want Earth. Is the paper like this? This impossible illusion is super, super fascinating. And I'm going to show you exactly now how you can make this illusion. To, you know, give to a friend, set up in your room, whatever you want. But can you guys work out how it's done? If not, here is how exactly you can make it. So, you want to start by grabbing yourself a sheet of paper. Now, any shape or size of paper, but I prefer to go rectangular. Rectangular, rectangular. And on this sheet of paper, you are going to make three cuts. One, two, three. That means we're going to need some scissors. And be very careful when you do this. So, the three cuts that we are going to make, I will mark with a sharpie. So the first cut is from about a third of the way down on the paper, so about here. You are simply going to cut from here to one of the long edges. Down the dotted line, the dotted, 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 dotted line, like so. And you are also going to do the same about two thirds of the way down the paper, so... Right there. Now, I said there was three cuts, so there's one more. And the last cut you are going to make is from about the middle of the paper. And you want it to roughly be in line with these other two cuts. And you're simply going to cut just straight to the edge. Opposite from the other two cuts. Like so, and it kind of creates this little M shape, as you can see. So let's make those cuts now. uses 
something that we use in quite a lot of my videos, and that is a couple of playing cards. Now, I have just grabbed any two playing cards, but these are very important cards because not only um, do I have two, but one is red and one is blue, as you can see. Now, this illusion does involve me folding these two cards, so only perform this illusion if you have some playing cards that you don't mind ruining. So fold that blue one in half, just like so. And the red one I will also fold in half, just like this, so the opposite way to the way we folded the blue one. Now next up, I'm going to take this red one and insert it into the middle of the blue one, like so, so you can see. It's going in the middle and I'll keep moving it down through the middle until it sticks out at the other end, like so. And I could even open this up and show you guys that it's literally in the middle. I can fold it back round on itself, which is actually the whole point in this illusion because this red seven that is enclosing the jack inside, I think it was the blue jack and the red seven, this red seven is going to do something pretty crazy to this jack. Are you guys ready for this? Watch closely as I move the jack through. It flips over. As it comes out the other side, take a look at that. It goes over. It comes back. And for some reason, <laughs> I don't know how, it has flipped over. How on earth did we do that? Well, I am going to tell you guys exactly how this illusion is done right now again. This is a pretty cool trick slash illusion, illusion, but when you just hold it like this, it kind of messes with your mind. So, spoilers here, this is how the illusion is done, so you are going to want to get yourself two different colors of playing cards. This is just optional, you can also use the same color, but I think with two different colors, you know, it really sells the illusion better. And what you are going to want to do is, you are going to want to cut one of these cards. Now the card you cut is completely up to you. But the way you cut it, is you cut it from the middle of the long edge to the middle of the card. Like so. Now this is before you show the illusion to your friend or spectator. Now I like to use a core card because it has a lot of art on it. So it hides the cut pretty well. And you want to choose a good card where you can barely even notice the cut on the back. If I was to remove my hand, you would probably notice it. But if you hold it like this, it's pretty subtle. And the other card has nothing nothing set up. So you're all ready to go. And you're going to start by folding this blue card in half like this. Concealing the cut on the other side. And the red card, I think you're actually supposed to fold it this way, but it doesn't really make a difference. Either way, you are going to slot this in to the middle of this blue card. However, as you slide it down, you are going to let it stick out the other end like this. And keep bringing it down and pinch it like this. But from this view, it looks like it's in between. And you can even move it back up to sell the illusion even more. And then to get it all set up, all you're going to do is open up this seven and turn it back on itself like so. And now the jack is all set up, so on the inside it looks like this. And that way you can slide it on through. And it looks like it has flipped over. And I think this is one of my favorite card illusions. So it's pretty, pretty cool. I hope you guys do enjoy that one. Now, these next three illusions are a little bit more like the first trick or illusion. 
illusion I showed at the very start of this video and they're going to kind of mess with your eyes so this is just your warning so here is the first one as you can see I have a picture of what looks to be a jazz board now as my camera adjusts to the colors the colors are very important because you can see we have this jazz board and we have this green cylinder which is casting a shadow over the jazz board now there are two 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 squares on the board that have been highlighted with letters we have an a and a b which is the dark square and the light square or are they that's the important question here which square is the dark square is it square a or is it square b now kind of like the first illusion you're probably going he's tricking me here and well it is an illusion so i am tricking you and you might already know that they are actually both the same color but this illusion looks so so incredible you would think that a is the darker color and b is the lighter color however if i cut these out to actually show you I'll cut this a i'm not going to cut it perfect but i'm just going to roughly cut out the a square and i will do the same for b i will cut out b even whilst cutting it out, you know, it's kind of messing with my head. And I still think the A looks darker. But as I cut out square B, you might be starting to see that A and B are the exact same color. Look at that beside each other put them on my hand the exact same shade of grey how crazy is that? that's pretty cool right? hope you guys enjoyed that one this next illusion I want to show you these three shapes and here they are or is it three shapes? Take a look down at the ends of the poles down here, just at the ends down here. How many of these cuboids or whatever you want to call them can you count? I can count one, two, three, and four. But now if I cover up half of the picture and tell you to look down this end, how many can you see now? You can see one, two, and three, right? So I on earth has this worked? Can you see how it's done? If not, I can kind of draw some arrows to explain it. So if I take the top side of, well, we'll label these one, two, three and four if i take the top side of dials one and four so this side here and draw a line straight down you'll see it goes straight to the end as we expect the same works for four however if i do this with dials two and three you'll see something pretty weird happens it never ends, it just keeps on going. So dials two and three are not the same as one and four. In fact, the top of three actually goes on to the bottom of dial two. So these are actually all connected in a sense. You can even see here this gap that we saw on this side down here actually leads into the side of three. 
so everything's pretty much all linked into one, and it's just a matter of lines that stops them from becoming proper shapes. And I think that's such a cool one. Now, this next illusion you might have seen before, um, it's a pretty famous one, and I have a pretty unique way of showing you guys how, how it kind of works, but I want to show you this sort of black rectangle. Now, I want you, I'm going to actually zoom in the camera even more here. I want you to scan your eyes across this rectangle very quickly, just look. But I want you to look at particular focal points. I want you to look in between the intersections and you should see little white circles. Now, if you look in your peripheral vision, what color are the other white circles? They're not white, are they? They're black. And if you cannot see this, then let me know. But all you have to do is just keep looking from dot to dot. Random dots start up here, go down here. And you should see that some of the dots actually turn black. So, this is crazy, right? What color are the dots? Are they black? Are they white? Are they gray? Who knows at this right? But I can tell you guys, in fact, that the dots in the middle are indeed white. This is all just a play on colors. The colors are messing with your mind because you have the black squares. And the way I want to show you this is I've made this little tube. Now if I hold this tube down on a circle, you can see that it's white. And if I pick another circle that you are seeing, let's say this one looks black. If I move up to it, you can see it is indeed white. And I can show you this for every single circle, that they are indeed all white, 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 white. Skip the random ones, they're all white. And this is a really cool illusion. And I've seen it so many times and I just I just love it so very much. Alright, let's be honest. Who here likes chocolate? Chocolate, 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 chocolate. I know I do. I love chocolate. And here with me I have, sadly it's not a real chocolate bar, but it is a paper chocolate bar. And there's a reason I've got a paper chocolate bar, you can see. I am going to cut this chocolate bar rather than eating it, but imagine it's a real chocolate bar and we are doing this with one and it would still also work. So, we're going to grab these scissors again. And the cuts I'm going to make on this chocolate bar are not where you would expect. It is not down the columns. It is not across the rows. I'm not going to be breaking any off like this. No, 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 no. I'm going to cut these in a really particular, particular fashion. You see, if I flip it over, you will see the way I'm going to cut these. Now these cuts I have to make are very, very precise. They've got to be very accurate. Otherwise this illusion will simply not work. And unfortunately we will go home with nothing. So there is our first cut. We have the bottom half, if you will, of the chocolate bar. We'll make the next cut down this line here. Like so. I have a few pieces there. Look pretty good. And I'll connect it back up to show you I'm doing no funny business. It's all an illusion. We'll make the next cut down at this line. Like so. And I'll pop this back where it belongs. And I'll make 
make this one final cut just down there in this final cut is the really important one you see as I connect everything back together we are back where we started with our chocolate bar however now I am going to do something very very special and I'm going to rearrange our chocolate bar along these cuts starting with the bottom half then I will take this cut here and move it up to the top corner as you can see then I will take this piece here and put it in down here and finally I will take this two piece here and put it in the top left and as you can see with after the cuts and after moving everything about we have one spare piece or extra piece of chocolate that I could eat on so is this an infinite chocolate bar? We are right back where we started. Could I just buy infinite chocolate bars and, or buy, say, a certain amount of chocolate bars and keep doing this until I have infinite chocolate? What has happened here? Where has the extra piece come from? Well, I'm going to explain this to you as best as I can to show you how this works now I probably have a few mathematical skeptical people out there and I'll try and show you the maths behind this y'all know I love my maths but if I connect the chocolate bar back up the way we started we're going to say a few facts about this chocolate bar so as it is connected back up we're going to write down a few things on this piece of paper here now. The first thing to note is this chocolate bar is 5 by 5. So it is a 5 by 5 chocolate bar which will give us 25 bits of chocolate. Correct. Next. Or we could also say, you know, this is 25 units squared, but it's not quite because the pieces are different dimensions. But dimensions are actually really important here. Because if I measure this chocolate bar with a ruler, and if I measure it very accurately, I will find that the bottom of the chocolate bar, the base, is around 9.5 centimeters. So if I draw a little rectangle for us, I'll say about 9.5 centimeters. And the length of the chocolate bar is going to be, and I'm not going to be um, estimating here, this is going to be very exact. is exactly fifteen centimeters. So this chocolate bar is nine point five centimeters by fifteen centimeters. Remember this. Now as I move the chocolate bar about in this unique fashion that gives us the extra piece like so we can see again that the chocolate bar chocolate chocolate bar is still the same it is one two three four five by one two three four five there's still 25 well 26 surprisingly pieces However, if we look again, you'll see that the chocolate is slightly askew. We have some smaller pieces up here or here, and I don't even know what is going on here. And if I measure this again for you guys, the base of the bar remains the same. 
at 9 centimeters. However, the length of the chocolate bar is actually slightly less. It is 14.7 centimeters. So where is that extra 0.3 gone? Well, if I move everything up ever so slightly to where the pieces should be the same size, about there, you will see there's an extra sliver that has gone away right there. So that's making all these pieces the same size. That little sliver is this piece here. Take a look at this incredibly looking die that is simply floating in the air as I move my hands about. How on earth have I done this? What is going on here? Does it mess with your mind or your brain as I move it about the screen? What do you think? Is this pretty cool? Well, this is one of my favorite ones that I wanted to show you tonight because it's not a die. It's not a big die. It's actually um, just a piece of paper <laughs> attached to my fingers. It's a little cutout. And I'm going to show you now how you can make this. So, for this illusion, you are going to need to make a printout, which looks a little bit like this. Now, I will pop the link to where you can download this template in the description, but I must say a quick thanks and a huge shout out to Quirkology. Quirkology. supplying this template as that is where I found this illusion. It's a channel I used to watch when I was younger. And all you're going to do is cut this out like so. And once you've cut it out, you're going to cut again down this line. It's a real easy template to print out and cut. It's actually one of the easier illusions you can make tonight. And once you have cut it out, you are going to make a few folds. Now the first fold is you are going to pick it up. You are going to take this little triangle and fold it back on itself. Like so. And do the same with this triangle. You are going to fold it back on itself. Like this. And the last two folds you are going to do is fold this too up on this black line right here. Create a good fold. The folds really sell the illusion here. And you're going to do the same with the three. You're going to fold it up on its line that makes it the three. And the last step is by piecing it together like this. You will create this little triangle at the back. And that's how you create the the dice. Now, one thing I would recommend is trimming this triangle like this. And then all you have to do is tape this bit to your pinky like that. And it will create the little dice illusion. And as you move it about, you don't even have to tape it. If you don't have tape, you can just hold it like this and it's still should mess with your head because it looks 3D when you move it about. And it's really, really cool. And I love this one. It's super, super awesome. Well, guys, that is going to just about be it for tonight's video. I really hope that you all did enjoy the illusions in this video. I know I had so much fun showing you guys some of these and making them and explaining how they're done basically. I love little tricks and illusions so I hope you guys did as well. If you did enjoy tonight's video then be sure to drop a
big thumbs up to let me know that you did and also drop a comment down below letting me know what your favorite illusion of the video was anyways thank you guys so much for watching i hope you're re relaxed i hope you had a good time and other than that i will see you all in the next video good night guys so much.